Okay, so first of all, I'll select these two variables and then I'll plot them against each other. I'll add a trend line to this chart and then double click on the trend line and add in an equation and also an R squared value. Now it looks like these two variables are related as one decreases, the other increases. However, it's possible that this pattern could be produced by random chance. So what we want to do is test to see how likely it is that these two variables are related. So we'll start by calculating the R value and we'll do this by using the correlation function. This is array one and this is array two. And then we'll take the R value and we will square it. And we get the R squared value, which is the same as the number down here in the chart. The R value can be anywhere between minus one and one. And R squared can be anywhere between zero and one. And the larger the R squared value is, the stronger the correlation is, and the more likely it is that the two variables are related to each other. Then we'll calculate N, which stands for number of observations. And we can do this using the count function and select just one of the columns. And now we know we have 12 observations. Then we'll calculate the T statistic. And we'll do that using this equation here. And I've also written it down here as well. So we'll do equals R multiplied by the square root. And then we'll do one set of open and closed brackets and then divide by and then another set of open and closed brackets, then another closed brackets. In the first set of brackets, we'll do N minus two. Then in the second set of brackets, we'll do one minus R squared and enter. Then we have the T statistic. Next, we'll calculate the degrees of freedom, and this is just n minus 2. Because we're doing a two-tail test, we subtract 2. And we also have n minus 2 as part of this equation here. So this part is really just the degrees of freedom. Then we'll start calculating the p-value by using the absolute function. And this will take a number, and if it is negative, it will make the number positive. But if the number is already positive, then it won't do anything to the number. And we need to do this because the next function that we'll use can only work with positive numbers. And that function is t.dist, which stands for distribution, and then dot 2t which stands for two tail. Then X is the T statistic, and this has to be positive. And then the degrees of freedom we just calculated here, and close brackets and enter. And now we have the P value. The P value can be anywhere between zero and one. And the smaller the P value is, the better because the smaller it is, the more likely it is that the two variables are related to each other. Usually the cutoff point is 0.05. So if you have a p-value which is less than 0.05, which we do have here, then that means that you have a more than 95% chance that the two variables are related. And we say that there is a significant correlation. Now there's a couple of other ways that you can calculate these numbers. Next, we'll calculate the F statistic, and we'll do that using this equation here, and I have also written it down here as well. And we'll do equals, open brackets, open brackets, N minus two, which again is just the degrees of freedom, close brackets multiplied by R squared. Then close brackets divided by open brackets, one minus R squared, and then close brackets and enter. And now we have the F statistic. 
Now we'll calculate the p-value again, and this will be 1 minus f dot dist, and then x will be the f statistic this time. Degrees of freedom 1 is the number 1, and degrees of freedom 2 is the degrees of freedom that we calculated here. And then cumulative is true, and close brackets and enter. And we get the p-value again, which is the same number as this value here. Now you can also get some of these numbers using the linist function, or line st function. And with this, you need to select all of the y values, which is all of variable 2, and then all of the x values, which is all of variable 1. Then for constant, that is true, b is calculated normally, and stats is true, return additional regression statistics. And this gets us a whole bunch of numbers. So we get the r squared value here, which is the same as this number here. We also get the degrees of freedom, which is the same as this number here. And we get the f statistic, which is the same as this number here. Then if I take the slope and divide it by the standard error for the slope, then I get the t statistic, which is the same as this number here. Now for the next method, we'll go to data and use data analysis. If you don't have data analysis in your toolbar, you need to go to File and Options, and then Add-ins, and Manage Excel Add-ins Go. And then tick the box for the Analysis Tool Pack. The Analysis Tool Pack is an add-in which is made by Microsoft and it comes with Excel, but it's switched off by default. So if you want to use it, you have to switch it on and OK. Now I will hide all of this to save some space. Now we'll go to Data Analysis. And I'll scroll down and select Regression and OK. And then the input Y range is all of variable 2. And the input X range is all of variable 1. Then I'll select an output range and I'll select this cell here. And then OK. And now we get a whole bunch of extra numbers. We have the R value here, which is the same as this number here. But in regression statistics, it will always be positive. Then we get the R squared value again. And we also get the F statistic again. And we get the significance F, which is really just the P value that we calculated here. We also get the T statistic, which is this number here, and then we get the p-value for that, which is this number here. So there's a few different ways of calculating these same numbers in Excel. OK, so in this video, I have shown you how to calculate the p-value in Excel, and that is everything.